yes, Breath of the Wild story was was fine to be told in the you know the chopped up memory format. It was designed exactly for that format, with that in mind. But then Tears of the Kingdom, I feel like the only reason they did the memory format is because that's what Breath of the Wild did, and they couldn't think of anything better, even though the story itself did not work in that format, even a little. So, I think if they can make the entire world totally free, except for the main plot and the main dungeons, like, or, you know, even something like... There are three dungeons open to you. You can do any of them in any order. The dungeons, like, you do something that triggers, like, the mid-act of the game, and now there's three more dungeons that you can do in any order. Like, even something like that, you know, where, like, it just imposes some sort of progression. And then like anything else that isn't a dungeon, you know, like leave it open to explore, sure. Oh, but you okay. I have I have my final ultimate criticism of Tears of the Kingdom. This is it. You ready? Demolishing entire tunnels worth of rocks. Fuck demolishing tunnels full of rocks. Absolutely the worst filler content in history. Oh my god. By like, how did they put that in there? And then they're like, oh, but they're gonna blow all their weapons. And instead of the answer to that being just make less rocks, the answer was make the rocks drop shitty fucking weapons so you can hit more rocks. No, no, <laughs> why? I don't know, that was like ultra weird. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I understand the Master Sword having to run out of power periodically. Like, I get it. Canon-wise, it obviously doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I get why they had to do it. Like, I'm, I'm okay with conceding that, just because otherwise, the moment you get the Master Sword, you literally never use anything else, right? And that, whatever. Given a durability system, I understand. I don't even mind durability as a concept too much. And I think Fuse was the perfect answer to everyone's criticisms of durability in Breath of the Wild. I think Fuse is a great mechanic on paper. What's up, knife?
Yeah, I mean, because here's the, here's the big problem with durability, right? In Breath of the Wild, durability disincentivizes engaging with enemies, right? I see a group of moblins, bokoblins, and I've got a good sword. I'm not going to fight those guys. What are they going to give me that's better than what I've got, right? I'm just going to ignore content. But with, like, horns and anim animal parts and fuse, all of a sudden it immediately solves that problem and grants things more durability than they would normally have as a reward. So, like, honestly, very, very good. One of, one of the master strokes of Tears of the Kingdom, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I was I was hoping for more enemy variety in Tears of the Kingdom than there ended up being, but the fact that they increased it from Breath of the Wild is very important. Creepy things in Twilight Princess? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Which creepy things? Creepy things, rather. Gonna go for it. Oh boy! A good Ganon could do it. What's up, Armindo? All right, 
I'm not allowed to miss ISG here, otherwise I don't PB. So let's get it right. Okay, good. One more. I don't know. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. I think I have a small PB, maybe less than a second even. Cool. Very good. PBing is good. Second sub 11. Very nice. This is about the size that every PB is going to be from here on out, because <laughs> there's not a whole lot to shave unless I start doing harder strats, but I'm not going to start practicing harder strats because I'm not going to do the harder strats at GDQ. So I got to just stick with the strats that I'm comfortable with doing for GDQ. World record rent when uh, I can't with these strats. I would need to shave off another 20 seconds. Uh, and there's about 15 seconds worth of new strats that I could add if I was really booking it, um, but it's significantly harder. Um, so the first thing is, is it 15 seconds? Probably not, but um, if you do bottom of the well differently, uh, and right after you get bomb chews, you can, um, what is it? You can like vine clip after bomb chews and swim out of bounds into the cage with the like-like, uh, and then you can get, uh, the shield through that door instead of like climbing out and getting the key and going to unlock the door um, through the crawl space. Um, and that saves that saves a significant amount of time if you do it right, uh, but not like enough time that the extra difficulty makes it free. Like it is very reasonable that you end up going slower because it's harder and it doesn't save a whole lot of time. Um, and then because you vine clip in bottom of the well, you end up spending one of your bomb chews, which means that you have one less bomb chew uh, in Dodongo's Cavern. Uh, and so you know that part in Dodongo's Cavern right after I clip out of bounds the first time and I do that like hover up to get back to where the, the second Beemos is and I mega flip off the Beemos. Um, that hover I use five bomb chews for, and it's so easy, right? On GameCube, like in Majora's Mask, most of you might know that hovering is way easier because explosions like are immediately their full size. And so when you backflip and drop an explosion, it immediately hits your shield and you stop again, right? And so hovering in Majora's Mask is super easy. On GameCube, on Ocarina of Time, well, in Ocarina of Time in general, the explosions start small and expand over the course of like a half a second or so. And so you end up outrunning the explosion midair and it never hits your shield and then you fall, right? That's why hovering in OOT is harder. But on GameCube, what happens is for some reason, if you're out of bounds specifically, meaning like the f there's nothing below you except the world void, you end up spawning a second explosion a frame sooner than it normally does for some reason. And there's two explosions superimposed on top of each other. One, a frame earlier than it normally does, and then one, the normal frame. And that earlier explosion, because it appears a frame sooner for some reason, you can't outrun it quite as much. And so you end up what with what essentially amounts to Majora's Mask hovers, where you just like backflip, drop a bomb chew, and you hover. And it's so easy. And you just do five of them in a row, and it's completely free. 
but when you spend a bomb chew in bottom of the well doing the vine clip for the faster strats, you have to do a completely different thing where the you, the four hovers that you have aren't enough. You have one less. And so then you have to do an extra hover like off of the Beemos' laser coming down at you from the ground above. And it's like, and then you have to like side hop, frame perfect, jump slash back in bounds outside the Beemos area. And it's just, it's a real pain in the butt, dude. So those are the world record strats. And I'm not doing it because I Definitely will not be doing that at GDQ because it's way harder. <laughs> and my goal at GDQ is to just get through it. So, uh, yeah, long-winded explanation to say no world record soon because I can't do it with the strats that I'm using. But, um, no, not, not too far off. Less than 20 seconds off, I think, which is pretty good for these strats and for me. Um, 